You're such an asshole. You pay, I play over at assholeconsulting.com, and we got an interesting request. Um, oh, more requests coming in. That sounds good. Hey, Aaron, I have an interesting request today. I'm thinking about doing a social experiment when I got older, probably after I retire. I would try to change my appearance and live as a black man to see what it's like, possibly travel much of the world. All this talk about race in the media and in television has got me curious. From what I've seen watching black people interact with other people, I expect it to be a lot more of a positive experience than many people would seem to expect. I could possibly write a book or go on a talk show and share my experiences. You, it's, it's been done. Like when you're in, like uh, this has been done. So uh, <clears throat> although it was done many years ago, and I almost guarantee you your experiences would be different than the gentleman who tried the exact same thing. Uh, but yes, this has already been done, which I'll get to later. I would like to get my skin color as dark as Herman Cain's. That's going to be an issue because Herman Cain, I believe, 100% uh, Jamaican descent. I could be wrong. And unlike the vast majority of uh, black folk in the United States, they do have some uh, white blood in there. I know this may shock a lot of you, but the slave owners may have banged a couple of the women back in the day. Um, so American blacks are not quote unquote 100% pure black. I mean, you, and it's very obvious when you go to like, you know, take your average American black man or woman. And then you look at <clears throat> somebody from like, say, uh, West Side Africa, from Congo or Senegal, and you're like, whoa, all right. So you can obviously see there's been a little bit of milk put into the coffee. Um, Herman Cain, I don't know if you could, I'm sure you could, I'm sure you could. With Hollywood today, I mean, look, they took Robert Downey Jr. and made him look exactly like a black man uh, in Tropic Thunder, but it's whether it's going to be in your budget or not. So it is possible, <clears throat> uh, but I'll go through that later on as well. Uh, but Herman Cain is, I mean, it's not like you're going to go for, say, um, a Lena Horn or a Charmin Michelle level of, quote, blackness. I'll get my driver's license picture taken, uh, retaken and keep my hair color and keep my hair cut, I would dress and, and act exactly the way I do now. My friends and family would know it's me. Anyway, I'm trying to figure out if it's actually possible to get my skin as dark as Herman Cain's by airbrush tanning everywhere. I think you have to take drugs, frankly, or have a, a world of work done through Hollywood. I talked to the tanning people in my area, and they said they didn't think they could get me anywhere near as dark as I wanted. But I talked to a couple of tanning people in the other states, and they said they thought they could probably get me as dark as I wanted using some custom airbrush tanning, but they had never done it that dark before. But it's also going to be an issue of budget. I mean, do you have, I mean, anything's possible, all right? You could do it. Um, and, you know, if, if you did blackface, uh, you don't, you can't do it half-ass either. You have to pass as a black man. So it has to be professionally done, uh, whatever that may require. But you just can't go in there and have people paint you because uh, they're going to be able to tell like that's a white guy with some weird ass crap on his face so uh it's possible to be done right so my question is do you have any knowledge of it on do you have any knowledge on if it would be possible for me to get my skin black using airbrush tanning i don't think airbrush tanning is going to require drugs and some other uh you, you're going to have to talk to a not a salonist, what do they call them? A makeup artist, uh, frankly. Uh, and this is going to require some research on your part to find out what's cheapest. Because as much as an interesting intellectual endeavor this might be, if it costs 100000 I mean, what did it cost for Robert to make Robert Downey Jr. look like a black man in Tropic Thunder? Guarantee you it costs more than, than $100. Uh, you're looking at maybe $100,000. Uh, it, it may not be worth it. <clears throat> um, so my question is, do you have any knowledge on if it would be possible for me to get my skin as like using airbrush tanning? Or do you know anyone off the top of your head who used to work in the tanning business who may know if it's possible for me to get my skin as dark as Herman Cain's? <laughs> was it there? I like, I, I mean, Herman Cain was, uh, he was my, he was my guy two elect two or three elections ago. Um, He's, he's a black man. He's very black. By airbrush tanning every week. I don't know anybody. What are you asking me for? You're, you're as much in the dark as I am right now. Maybe somebody, someone watching your video may know if it's possible for me to custom airbrush my skin 
Black Your Thoughts. All right, here's the deal. This is already, a guy already did this, and he wrote a book, and there was a movie made of it called Black Like Me, and I got it pulled up here. Uh, Black Like Me, first published in 1961, is a nonfiction book by white journalist John Howard Griffin, recounting his journey in the deep south of the United States at a time when African Americans lived under racial segregation. Griffin was a native of Dallas, Texas, who had his skin temporarily darkened to pass as a black man. He traveled for six weeks throughout the racially segregated states of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Arkansas, and Georgia to explore the life from the other side of the color line. I think it was a brilliant idea. Sepia Magazine financed the project in exchange for the right to print the first account as a series of articles. Um, the 188-page diary was the genesis of the book. 1964, the film version, Black Like Me, starring James Whitmore. Who's James Whitmore? Why do I know the name? Oh, that guy. Oh, he was... What the hell was he in? He was in uh, many different things. He was like one of those guys you were watching TV in the 70s and 80s. Half you don't even weren't even around in the 70s and 80s. Anyway, so this has been done, and I think rightly so. I think it was interesting. And you know what? Now maybe it, I mean, that was, God almighty, that was more than 50 years ago this guy did this. And there's obviously been changes in um, race relations and uh, racism, not in the pejorative sense, but racism as a study, the relation of races is, uh, in the United States, I think you could totally do something like that today and do an updated version of you know, Black Like Me 2, or version 2.0, because things have definitely changed. Um, matter of fact, I think you'd come up with the complete opposite reaction. I don't think people would be, you know, uh, quite what uh, uh, John Howard Griffin suffered or endured back when he was doing it. So I think, uh, I know it sounds cheeky or even condescending, I wouldn't be the worst. I mean, if, look, if you had that board during retirement, this wouldn't be the worst ex you know, expenditure of your time. It, it would be shuffleboard, especially if you were to put forth a serious, uh, not necessarily academic, but a serious book. You could write a book like this and see things how have, uh, see how things have changed since 1961. Um, so is it possible? Yeah, absolutely. This was now, where was it? Hang on, let me scroll down. It's a drug they mentioned. Now, this is in 1961. So keep in mind... Um, <clears throat> Sepia. They mentioned it. Did I lose it? Oh, here it is. In late 1959, John Howard Griffin went to a friend's house in New Orleans, Louisiana. It's New, not New Orleans, it's New Orleans. Once there, under the care of, dermatologist, of a dermatologist, Griffin went, underwent a treatment of large oral doses of anti-vitiligo drugs, metho, methox saline, spending up to 15 hours daily under a ultraviolet lamp. Now, I'd be worried about cancer at this point right now. Uh, when he could, pa could pass as an African-American, Griffin began a six-month or six-week journey in the South. Don Rutledge traveled with him, documenting the experience with photos. All right, so... It was possible in 1959. Now, hopefully, with less toxic and less uh, skin cancer-inducing methods, you could achieve something similar. And I'd be very curious to see what would happen. I, I, I don't know. I have, I have, I suspect certain things, but it would be very interesting if somebody else did this, uh, were to revisit this and recreate the exact same experiment Mr. Griffin did back in 1959 today. Um, but it's going to, all right, so it's six weeks minimum. I don't know what it would cost today. Uh, maybe you'd recoup the expenses writing a book. Um, it's a brilliant idea actually now that I think about it because, you know, sophomoric or condescending as it might seem, or you just got to be bored off your ass. You could provide a lot of insight to race relations and help advance people in society. You actually could, uh, doing something like this. Um, <clears throat> but I am not a dermatologist of any kind. You would probably definitely want to talk to a dermatologist or just look up how did Morton Downey Jr., or not Morton Downey Jr., Robert Downey Jr., uh, become black. Uh, but then, you know, make a serious go of it so you're not pissing away your time. You seem to be interested in it in a, uh, just a, like, oh, I'm curious and I'm bored, but I think there's a, a financial opportunity here for you as well 
where you could document this, keep a diary, and, and have something like this that uh, Mr. Griffin had. So, all right, that's it. The old captain's got answers if you got questions, but more importantly, if you have money, over at assholeconsulting.com. We'll see you guys later. Toodles.